What do I own the Dan Marino done on? Super Bowl ring. It's an actual Super Bowl ring from uh, the 2001 Patriots versus Rams. One of the players came in here a few years ago and I bought it off him. That particular Patriots ring is pretty gnarly. I mean, it's got a lot of stones in it. It's not your uh, typical Super Bowl ring by any means. I've had it in the store for years because I really, really don't want to sell it unless someone offers me just some stupid amount of money. And it's on sale at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop for only $100,000. Good day, folks. Here are the times when Pawn Stars made insanely profitable deals. The old man is crazy about silver. He's gonna be like a kid on Christmas morning when he sees this. I've never seen you get up from your desk that quick. I always get up, son. Not generally very Move quick. My hand. <laughs> you can't go like 115? No. So what's your best price you can give me today? I'll go 111,000 even. I'll go up 99 bucks. How about 112? No, 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 there's no money to be made for it. 111 sounds good to me. All right, steal 111. 2014 Hertz Penske GT Mustang. A client drove a 2014 Hertz Penske Mustang to the gold and silver pawn shop, itching to make a big deal. So this is it, huh? This is it, that's right. 2014 Hertz Penske GT. This was Lee Iacocca's baby. This was the cool one, not the minivan he came out with a lot later. Rick was drooling at the prospect of buying the limited edition vehicle. I mean, and it's a Mustang too, it's an iconic car. Not only was it one of 150 produced, but it was also one of the first 10 manufactured for a rent a racer campaign. There's 150 of these Hertz Penske GT Numbers 1 through 10 are unique, and they went to Hertz and Penske VIPs. The fact that the car was in pristine condition and had never been rented out only made Rick want it even more. Rick called Joey Logano, a close friend and NASCAR driver, to confirm that the car was in excellent shape. I have someone out here at the track. Do you mind if I go grab him? He's a friend of mine. I just want him to look at it, okay? Sure. Actually, sure. I was helping someone might test drive it for me. <laughs> I'm always up for that. I just want to make sure there's no problems at high speed. <laughs> All right, let's hit it. The Mustang tore up the racetrack and impressed all the witnesses. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> the tires are a little warm, but. So I heard. The car is yeah. okay. Yeah. So, Joey, what do you think is worth? It's hard to say because it's, it's rare. There's not many of these cars for sale. So, with all that, I'd, I'd say it's worth around $75,000. The seller demanded $85,000, but ended up settling for $60,000. So, what's your best price? I'll do $75,000. <sighs> I'd give you 60 grand for it. I still think that's a little low. Would you do 67? I'll go 60 grand. 62, Rick. I'll write you a check for 60 grand. I'll do it. All right, man, it's a deal. Bring it down the shop and uh, we'll do some paperwork. You don't need to be a car expert to know that Rick made at least $20,000 on this deal. 3,300 ounces of silver. An unassuming young man walks into the gold and silver pawn shop and blows away the pawn stars with his unexpected treasure. The old man is crazy about silver. He's gonna be like a kid on Christmas morning when he sees this. He shows Rick a mountain of silver bars and coins that his father had advised him to invest in a long time ago. Growing up, my dad always taught me to invest, and so I'm here today to cash in on that investment. Well, we'll see what we can work out. When Rick calls the old man, he is beside himself. He's delighted over the heap of silver like a kid on Christmas morning. I've never seen you get up from your desk that quick. I always get up, son. Not generally very Move quick. My hand. The young man asked for $115,000 for the entire stash of silver. You can't go like 115? No. So what's your best price you can give me today? I'll go 111,000 even. I'll go up 99 bucks. How about 112? No, 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 there's no money to be made for it. 111 sounds good to me. All right, steal 111. When Rick and the old man paid 110,000 to the young man, coin collectors everywhere knew they had been duped. They all knew that most of the coins were worth at least double their melt value. Rick went on to make a fortune of the silver by binting some into the $70 coins engraved with the old man's face and the words, in the old man we trust. Only Rick knows the amount he made on this deal, but we can comfortably say that it was a buttload. Butet shotgun. A stern-looking man walks into the silver and gold pawn shop and he hands Big Hoss a fancy old gun. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it definitely looks French. That's about my extent of knowledge on this thing. Let me uh, grab my dad real quick. When Rick comes over to help Big Hoss, he determines that a gun is an original Ornit Boutet shotgun. When Rick discovers the man wants $10,000 for the weapon, he calls in the big guns. Well, how much do you want for it? Because if he wants 50 bucks, I'll just give him that now. It's not going for $50. I'm looking at 10 grand. Okay, give Alex a call. I mean, it's most likely worth at least that, and we'll go from there. Rick's expert tells the group that the Boutet was the rock star gunsmith of the 18th and early 19th centuries. Holy moly. 
This is stunning. Boutet was the gunsmith in France. So the guy had a long career as basically the finest gunsmith, certainly in France, but many people would argue in the world. He only worked for royalty and nobility. Think Louis XVI and Napoleon. After heading to the shooting range, the expert determines the gun could sell for as much as $30,000 on auction. What do you think it's worth? I think if this went to auction in this condition, I wouldn't be surprised to see it sell up for $30,000. Damn. That much? It's really nice. After haggling over the price, Rick pays the man sixteen thousand. So you were asking ten. I'm assuming you want a little bit more now. No, I want a lot more. All right. Twenty. I think that's a pretty fair offer. I'll give you fifteen grand for it. Eighteen. I'll tell you what. I'll give you sixteen grand for it. But something like this, I'm not going to see money back for a year or two. It's a lot more than I thought I would get. We'll do sixteen. All right, sweet. Bring it back to the shop, we'll do some paperwork, and uh, I'll get you paid. Not a bad deal considering that Rick could sell it for double the amount. Nuremberg Padlock Key Gun When an easygoing guy hands Chum Lee an ancient key gun, we all fear history will repeat itself. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, how you doing? What is this? 17th century padlock key gun. Take a look at the lock here, it's pretty freaking heavy, wow. Yeah, it's his own weapon. Luckily, by season 17, Chum had learned his lesson. When the guy asked for $5,000, Chum brought in an expert. I'd like to get someone in to take a look at it. Stuff like this is faked. I'm gonna need to make sure it's authentic and put a real solid value on it. Wait right here, give me just a few minutes and I'll have someone write down. The expert verified that the key gun was not only real, but incredibly rare and well-designed compared to the crude ones that make their way to the market. So collectors refer to these as key guns and they're actually really rare. You don't find them very often. This dates somewhere from about 1680 to 1720. So there is a little marking behind the lock. You see that? So it looks like a coat of arms or if it's German, a Wappen. I can see sort of the outline of the side of an eagle and then there's a letter N on the top. So it's definitely German. I mean, this is a really nicely designed key gun. Usually these are very crude. To truly determine the gun's value, the expert has them all go to the gun range where Rick joins them. After firing the gun, the expert values it at $10,000 since it is a working collectible. I mean, so what do you think it's worth? This has a padlock and it functions as both a key and a gun, which is key. Nuremberg coat of arms on it, that that really helps the value and gives it some, some provenance. Based on all those things, I think in an auction you get about $10,000 for it. While Rick stubbornly insists that five grand is the most he will pay, to Rick's chagrin, Chum offers the guy $5,200 and shakes his hand. So how much did you want for it? Let's go seven and a half. You bet you said five before we came out here. But it was valued at $10,000 now versus what I wanted for it. You have to understand, okay? You can put this in auction and after all the fees you can get eight grand, but that might be two, three years from now. So I'm offering five grand. It's more than a fair offer. I'm thinking $5,500. I'm really thinking the five. Well, let's meet somewhere in the middle, like, you know, maybe 53? 52 and you got a deal. 52 it is. Well, how did that just happen? That's how you close the deal. ML Snowden Photon of Light Sculpture. A blonde bombshell walks into the pawn shop dragging along a hideous piece of investment quality fine art. What do we have here? An ugly piece of artwork. Okay, so it's done by... Snowden. ML Snowden. Got it from a former in-law and I'd like to get rid of it just like I got rid of them. It's different. I sort of like it. She is a really famous artist and a lot of people like her work. She got it from an in-law and wants to get rid of it like she did then. Them. She asks Rick for $50,000. I mean, how much were you looking to get out of it? $50,000. Um... Rick balks at the offer, especially since his fine art expert is out of town. Normally, I got a friend who I usually call the expensive artwork, but he's out of town. Eventually, he offers the lady $20,000 before getting an expert's appraisal. She instantly accepts. It is nice. This is very collectible. People love this stuff. I'll tell you what. I'll give you 20 grand. Deal. I'll take it. Whoa. That was easy. Okay. 20 grand. All right. Thanks so much. Corey and Chum are sure that Rick has been played, so he calls in Chad to prove them wrong. What is that thing? It is a statue obviously grab the other side what in the hell is this it's an ml snowden what'd you pay for it twenty thousand dollars why no one's gonna buy this no. Corey and chum seem to think that they're absolute geniuses and know so much more than i do so i'm calling in chad just to show them that i know what i'm doing chad tells the group that the photon of light sculpture retailed for 60 grand and could sell for about thirty-six thousand. wow ML Snowden. This piece, this series, originally sold fifty-eight, sixty thousand. All right. The big question: What's it worth? Because I paid a lot of money for it. I would put this one probably at about thirty-six thousand. Okay. This kind of stuff, it's only going to go up. Thirty-six thousand dollars. I think the market will bear that. Yeah.
Rick did it again, bought an absolute treasure for a fraction of its value. John F. Kennedy's Cigar Box A private museum owner walks into the gold and silver pawn shop carrying a cigar box he claims belonged to JFK. What do we got here? I have John F. Kennedy's cigar box used in the White House. Wow. This is John F. Kennedy's cigar box. Sure is. And inside are the remaining unsmoked cigars. The cigar box sat on his desk at the White House and had come into the man's collection after he purchased it from the real estate of a deceased friend and employee of the JFK family. So where did you get it? Mrs. Lincoln, personal secretary, befriended a man named Robert White, and she gave quite a few items to Robert White. So I made a private deal with the White estate to buy some of the items. The box had eight cigars still wrapped in plastic. The box contains 11 hand-rolled cigars wrapped in clear plastic. What do we got there? Eight. There's a few missing. Only three of the cigars had been smoked. The seller claims he didn't smoke them. So someone smoked three of the cigars? Not me. That's how I got it. The guy asked Rick for $95,000 because he knew a similar box had gone for $575,000 at an auction. How much are you asking? Well, as you know, the other comparable one went for half a million bucks or so. I need some quick cash or else I would just put that in an auction and get 150, 200 grand, whatever it's going to go mm. for. I'll give it to you for 95000 After a tough negotiation, the museum owner settled for a low ball offer of 60 grand. I think the auction estimate was 100 and it didn't meet it. I'll give you 50 grand. Uh, I can't do that. 70. I wouldn't pay more than 50 grand, Pops. It's up to you. I'll go 60. All right. It's all on you. I'm out. 65 and you got a deal. 60 grand. I'll give you 30 now. Give me the rest of the paperwork. I'll give you the other 30. Got it, man. All right. Meet you right over there and we'll do some paperwork. He lamented to the cameras that he only accepted the offer because he really needed to move his museum to a new facility and the auction would take too long. I took 60. It's fine because if I would have put it in an auction, I would have had to wait. We need money now to get this new facility. Rick eventually sold the cigar box for $75,000 but complained that he liked having it in the shop and was sad to see it go. 2001 Super Bowl Patriots Championship Ring. What do I own the Dan Marino done on? Super Bowl ring. It's an actual Super Bowl ring from uh, the 2001 Patriots versus Rams. One of the players came in here a few years ago, and I bought it off him. When Brock Williams, the defensive back for the Patriots, pawned his ring for $2,600, he had 120 days to reclaim the valuable bling. Brock Williams, he pawned the ring. He didn't sell it. I mean, he, I'm sure he more than planned on picking it up, but then weird things happen in this world. Fortunately for Rick, Brock never came for the ring. This piece of bling is worth at least 30 grand. That particular Patriots ring is pretty gnarly. I mean, it's got a lot of stones in it. It's not your uh, typical Super Bowl ring by any means. Realistically, a ring like that is probably worth 25. Rick loves the ring so much that he set a ridiculous asking price of $100,000 to discourage any customers from coming to take his precious ring away. I've had it in the store for years because I really, really don't want to sell it unless someone offers me just some stupid amount of money. And it's on sale at the Gold and Silver pawn shop for only $100,000. Whether he sells for a reasonable price or the inflated one, Rick will make a sinful profit on the hard-won ring he purchased for a decimal of its actual value. A 5th edition 1842 Book of Mormon When Adam, a regular, walked into the pawn shop with an 1842 edition of the Book of Mormon, Rick was not all that excited. Hey, it's you again. What do you got? Brought for you a book. The Book of Mormon. Is it the play or the book? <laughs> it's definitely the book. It's even harder to get this than tickets to the play. Oh, that must be really difficult then. When the guy I asked for 25 grand, Rick called Rebecca to appraise the book. All right, is it an older version of it or? Yeah, well, this is a version that was printed actually in 1842. This one wasn't printed in many copies, maybe 600 something copies. I was gonna ask something on the order of like $25,000 for it. Damn, well, you have to be extremely careful when you're buying books. So I've called in Rebecca to check it out. She remarked that it was the most valuable book Rick had ever had her appraise and valued it at $40,000. The Book of Mormon. Wow. Well, this is actually really hard to find. Rick, this is by far the most valuable book you've ever had me appraise. For a lot of books, later editions don't hold a ton of value because they're not the first. But these early editions of the Book of Mormon will still hold a lot of collectible value because of all of that history. I would appraise this book actually at about $40,000. Oh. Weirdly enough, Adam reduced his asking price by one grand and went home with 24,000. Realistically, what's your best price? 
I think 25,000 was really there. So you take 23. I really think it's a $40,000 book. You'll sell it. There's a lot of demand for it. Can you give me a little? Just let me do 24,000. Uh, you gave me an extra thousand last time. This time I'll give it to you. So we'll do okay. it that way. It's a deal. Rick certainly made a killing on this deal. 1602 Dutch East India Trading Company Bell. No one thought that the frazzled redhead who walked into the gold and silver pawn shop had anything beyond jewelry to offer. So what do we got here? This is my 1602 shipwreck Dutch East India Company Bell. The lady wanted to sell a valuable item to fund her upcoming move. When she plopped an ancient bell in front of the pawn stars, the old man was skeptical about its value. I just love old shipwreck items. You can just imagine the journey they've been on. This ain't right. I don't think this thing was in salt water for any period of time to mount to anything. Though Rick thought the bell could have been from a shipwreck, the old man was convinced that there wasn't any evidence of it being submerged under seawater. Rick, how you doing? Here's the bell. What's your concerns on this? I don't think this bell was submerged in salt water. If it was, it would be in a lot worse shape than it is now. Well, you're right. Rick's expert confirmed that the bell was original, since 90% of all shipwrecks actually occurred in salt water. 90% of all shipwrecks are in shallow of water. In fact, most of them are sticking up. You know, they hit yeah. the reef and they pretty much stay there. The bell's genuine. It was valued at a stunning $15,000. I think this could be put into one of the treasure auction catalogs and they'd probably go somewhere $15,000, give or take. The lady walked out happy and exclaimed that she had gotten enough money to move and to get a new big screen TV. I'm moving. This is going to pay all my moving expenses and maybe even get me a big screen TV. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment, hit the like and subscribe buttons, hit that notification bell for more videos like this, and share this video with your family and your friends. See you soon.